There might have been occasions that you were really trying to get a nice signature into your application so you could put it into a PDF or another document. And it's always a difficulty because by the time you scanned it in, it looks very sort of artificial. So if you want to keep the texture and everything going, this is one great way of doing it. So I took a photo using my mobile device and I'll show you how we get to do it. Just on conventional paper. So you'd go in, do a signature, write a signature on the paper, and this is the paper that you work on. So first step here is to get the paper out of the way. By that I mean is turn all the gray textures and everything into just a plain white color, and the pen marks you want to get them as separated. Okay, so how are we going to go about it? We'll start off, I'm just going to unlock this layer, then we will add an adjustment onto that, a curves adjustment. And there's a nice little sort of peak that happens here with a curves adjustment. You see this happening on a page that looks like this. Okay, if you want to avoid signing on a color page or pages with stripes or anything, just try and sign on a blank page, white page, and take a photo. It will come out dark like this often because of the lighting. But in here, you'll take the curves, this dot, keep it to the top. Don't let it pull down as you move it across. Just keep it and move just to the left of this blue peak area. This is created by the signature on the page. But if you notice some area is still a bit defective here, you can move it a little bit more, but not too much. You don't want to take it here, then it gets totally washed out. Okay, so you take it just until the page itself has got a, a nice sort of clean white texture. Most of the cases you can get up until this point and it will do. And then at the bottom to make the ink mark a bit more bold, you'll you'll take it just to where the one section starts here. Um, usually you don't have this green here, you'll have a blue section um, that sort of starts here, but you just take it to the end or you could view and see what it looks like. If it looks too excessive, you can pull it back a bit, but that, that sort of looks well there. So that's your curves adjustment. So now what we've done is made the page uh, white and the text. In this case, it's a blue pen that's been used. Um, if it's a black pen, it doesn't matter because now we've got these two. Now to be able to make a selection of this blue pen or whatever's written on the white paper, we choose a channel, a particular channel. In this case, we're going to choose the red channel. If you don't see your channel showing up here, you can go to Windows and just enable it here. So we're choosing channels and you click on red composite. We've got a red composite attached there now. Now what we have here is a mask that's been created. The white and the black has been masked off from each other. And of course, you know, with masks, if there's a grayish area, it has a tone of the particular selection. So then if we've selected Composite Red, you right-click on Composite Red and you go to Load Pixel Selection. What this is doing is selecting, as a mask would select, everything white it's selecting and not selecting the anything that is black or gray. Um, so if you say Load Selection, it's going to have some marching ants that move around. But now it's selecting all the white and excluding the, the darker colors. So what you want to do is invert that because you want it to select the signature. So we go to selection and we say invert selection. And you notice now it's only selecting the signature. Now in this case, we're done with the channels area. So I'm going to just reset this channels area over there. And then also we don't need this layer that we were working on where the signature was. We can switch that off. If I switch that off, you'll see it goes totally transparent. And now into the signature area that we have, we have to drop a color. So how to get it there? We're going to go to our layers and we're going to go down to new fill layer. So where that selection is, we're going to fill it in. Based on the mask that we had in the darker areas, it will fill it with a darker tone of whichever color and the lighter areas a bit lighter. Okay, so if we click there, um, we will see this is white because this area is white here. But if I turn it to red, we'll see the same thing happening. Okay, and if you notice, I'm going to just zoom in here. Can you see this? These tones of red, it like fades out there, even though the marching ants don't seem to cover some of the areas. 
it is still represented with the faded out areas. Um, even here, it's probably more obvious. These marching ants are not even covering this light red area, but it is registered in the system when you make that uh, right click on composite and make that selection for the mask. Okay, we can change this, of course, into any color that we're looking at. We can go maybe a dark color, but I just want to disable these marching ants here because I'm pretty much done with what I need there. We'll go to layers, uh, let's see selection, and we'll say deselect, or you could press Control D. So there you have it now, and you can filter the colors like you want to, and that's on your full layer. Okay, and what I suggest at this point is you can go File, and you can export it. Export it as a PNG, so it has its uh, transparencies in the background, and there we have it. If you want to edit it or crop it any bit, you can do it here and use the crop tool. But just know that if you move this layer around, because of the way it's designed, there'll be like almost a, a black layer at the bottom of it, like this. Okay, that appears. So I'm going to go Control Z. So I suggest what you do is export it as a PNG and then do your further editing. Or you could just go, before you export it, select the crop tool. Let's take it to its nice positionings. And pull that across that across and then press enter and then we've cropped that what is really great about this is you can see the texture like the pen has been written over there and of course you still have all the flexibility of you know changing the pen color or you could even get it back to your blue color that you added originally if you wanted to do that or whichever tones of blue you have but you have all the control with it and there's a signature that has lovely texture fading of the pen as it's writing, because it comes from the original. And then let, we'll just go there and say export. And we'll export that as a PNG. There's the original one there, the one that before we edited the thing. So I'm going to just say RT at the end and save it. And yeah, let me just open a new document and pull both of those in. You can see them side by side. Let's create that document and I'm going to go and say place and we'll select both of them and put that there. Let's pull the first one there and then the second one there. Okay. So there we have the original on the paper and this is the edited version that we can use now that's transparent and we could even put it over this this one and you can compare and see how it looks in that sense really really awesome okay hopefully that helps and uh, gets you underway so be blessed and shalom